without further ado, we're going to be looking at these from a Christian uh, perspective. This is the drone video of his uh, from his wedding. Uh, here it is, 500 drones. Here's the video. And uh, here's some commentary here. The, the technology uh, behind those drones is very impressive, in my opinion. I talk for a living. You guys probably know that. But this, this is going to be the toughest speech that I have ever done in my life. I'm probably going to cry. And you've seen me cry a lot of times already, so that's probably no surprise. <laughs> I used to find the idea of fate impossible to believe i would which um from a christian perspective i don't believe oh hello robert Kester. i don't believe in fate i believe in uh, god and god's providence and things of that nature insist to people life is like a deck of cards being shuffled and dealt in no particular order but as i stand in front of you today and in front of the most beautiful woman i have seen in my life here's why i think i was wrong I think it's really easy to feel lost. I think we all feel lost at points, both on a personal level. You know, my career isn't going anywhere. My friends don't really like me. I'll never find a partner. But also on a bigger, you know. And yes, from a Christian perspective, that can make sense. Sometimes people do feel lost and depressed um, some of the time. And wow, we already got four viewers on the podcast. So thanks, guys, for tuning in. Verse scale. I mean, just look up. There are 200 billion trillion stars up there. And when you look at just one star, it's so far away that the light from it takes 100,000 years to get to you. You're looking at something that happened 100,000 years ago. Which, no, obviously the Earth is six to 10,000 years old. And um, the light um, from the star, when they were created, just instantly got there. And then it, um, now the light is now 100,000 um, light years away. So that's how that works, like new stars that um, are created to supernovas and stuff like that. So where on earth do we fit into this vast picture? We're made of stardust. Oh, no, but seriously, like virtually every element inside of us was formed in the stars. Eh, it depends on what he's trying to say with that. Yes, we're made out of dust, and I suppose that there could be dust and stars. So, sure, we'll take we'll take that. We borrow it for a bit of time, we live our lives, we laugh, we cry, and then we return that stardust back to the universe. Okay, but it doesn't really go into the sky, unless, of course, you shoot yourself into the sky purposefully. It just goes into the dirt. So surely, surely, everything that ever happens in our lives, it's all temporary. No one's going to care in a hundred years. That's true, which is why we have been created, you know, to uh, honor and respect and worship God and to, um, you know, glorify uh, him. Oh, my gosh. Right there. It's, no one's going to remember in 500 years. Everything we will ever achieve will live and die on this one tiny rock floating in the middle of an indifferent nothingness. Surely, if the end destination of life is death, and that's... The only thing that we can say for certainty. Which isn't true, right? There is an eternity. There's a heaven and a hell. Um, and that's what, where his worldview is messed up. There's no um, death. There's not the final solution to life. Then life itself is meaningless. This is something I used Which, to since he believes this, now he has to come up with a way that life is important or not uh, meaningless to him. So here's how he's going to come up with that. I think about a lot before meeting Drisha. I would look at life through this hyperlogical, hypercritical lens and would continue to come to the conclusion that when you ask enough questions, no one has the answers and eventually that there are no answers. There is no point. A lot of my ways of thinking stemmed from very early on. Like at school, for example, people would act like I wasn't part of the conversation that I was standing in. People would run up to me in the corridor, shout ugly in my ear, and then disappear before I could turn around. And that's really people told me I'd be really sad. But if there is no God, and if there's no reason for life, and there's nothing that they're trying to, you know, trying to do, right? There's no reason to write. There's no reason for morality. 
and morality doesn't exist because Jojo's worldview, he doesn't believe in it uh, because, uh, you know, just like who just decides what morality is, then he doesn't, you know, then, then people running up and shouting ugly, pretending he doesn't exist, doesn't really matter. It's not really wrong because right and wrong don't exist given the worldview that he's espoused. Now let's see what the comments say. Uh, my biggest fear is death. Well, you know, with uh, Jesus Christ, if you accept him as your Lord and Savior, you know, you will all become saved and you'll get to go to heaven when you die. Single forever. I felt invisible. Like I could be standing there in a room full of people and they could just walk right through me. So to try and escape that feeling, I keep my head down. I avoid eye contact. I used to walk around like this all the time because, because that hurt less. I guess this is where he also gets, um, from a tech perspective, his love of gaming because he, um, you know, it, it's something that you can do one-on-one. -on -one. Like in his videos, he's always going, excuse me, on and on about um, how much he liked the PS, uh, the PS Vista, I think Vita handheld and the Nintendo um, Game Boys that were coming out and the DSS um, in 2004 and 2006. And I can see why, um, because he, you know, was isolated in school. But then I found YouTube, actually. Not very sure she's coming, I promise. I made some videos online, people liked them, so I kept making those videos and it felt like I blinked and suddenly I was popular. People had gone from wanting nothing to do with me to being in wonder, praising me. People were like, I knew you could do it from the beginning. Congratulations, I had my money on you from the start. And you would think that would be the cure to that deeply ingrained need for a purpose. That feeling of not being good enough for the outside world. It certainly felt like it at the time. But it actually made it worse. The simple fact that people found me so much more impressive on paper or over the internet when they were far away from me than when I let them get close meant that I decided to keep it that way. I created this outer shell for myself, this false, perfect person persona that I become based on what I thought people wanted me to be. Which, um, you know, makes sense. And he doesn't really have much to live for and he doesn't really have any, you know, major goal intact because um, he doesn't believe in an afterlife or a religion or anything like that, which I believe to be Christianity. I adopt other people's ways of thinking. I did everything I could to get every single person to like me, and I never get too close. I'd always keep some distance so they didn't know me so well they'd realize I was the same old, boring, nerdy, lanky kid that it had been made pretty clear to me that no one liked. For those of you who knew me when I was younger, you'll know that I used to love being home. When I was really young, I'd cross my arms angrily and I'd tell people they were stupid for not letting me go home. That's kind of funny, honestly. And when I got older, I, I did the same thing. I just did it internally. <laughs> and it's not because we had a TV or toys or a garden to play in. Home was the only place where I didn't feel the need to hide who I was. Mm. This little sanctuary, free from the judgment and expectation that I tried to shelter myself from. Now, I could well have lived my entire life like this, a silent, lone particle drifting within this enormous universe, working, laughing, crying, ultimately without reason. And that's how sad this worldview is from the Christian viewpoint. You know, um, we were created to honor and uh, respect and worship God and to um, witness to others to tell them about Jesus' love. And that's, you know, what, what's going to last in 500 years, right? No one's going to care about what the uh, Vivo uh, phones were, or the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra was back in uh, in 2072, right? I'm not funny. Or oh, even in 2720, no one's really going to care. But, but what people are going to care about is if you either made it to heaven or to hell. But then I saw you, Trisha, standing on the other side of that busy London street looking right back at me, wearing the most beautiful smile I'd ever seen in my life. She was holding back a laugh, watching me wheeling along this massive suitcase behind me, a tradition whenever I'd come to London, hanging in And this was about three years ago, so he was already an established, you know, tech YouTuber, blogging, everything like that. Hello, um, Sharkfin Tech, and LJB says hello. So, yeah, you guys have some fun in the chat. Into things, 
looking like I was about to move in before I'd even met her. I locked eyes with her. I laughed the heck, and the rest was history. Too bad they didn't get this on a clip for YouTube. That would have been really nice because, you know, he, he was probably there to film something or some tech event. That's what the suitcase was for. This was only a few years ago. So, I mean, honestly, he could have uh, he, he could have been filming something. The first time I met Drisha, I booked three different bars. I've been on enough dates at this point to know that changing locations about once per hour is a good way to keep things interesting. Interesting? Of course, we're not going to test that out. But, you know, if anyone else wants to test it out and report back, please tell me. We didn't leave the first one. Also, interesting that... I wonder if that's a U.S. thing or... I mean, sorry, not a U.S. thing. An England thing where going to three bars on, on a first date is normal. Uh, maybe in the United States, they do Starbucks. What do kids do? Well, what do kids do? I, well, it's mostly at school. Honestly, what do kids do? Okay, that's going to be a segment um, coming up on the show. Um, kids of, uh, ki kids of uh, the, the chat, uh, where, where do you people go take people when you go to date? Uh, you don't know that? Oh, okay. So the uh, official chat, but says he doesn't know. Uh, well, um, two out of three of the people in the chat are teenagers. So um, tell me, if you've ever been on a date, where do you take the uh, other people? What is that? Face palm? Okay. Uh, let's go. I never, ever wanted to leave the first one. Which is also interesting because uh, in his uh, engagement video, his high-tech engagement video, really, really good video, very fun, very interesting, uh, good usage of tech in it. He um, does say that he the, the first thing that he does to take on the date is a bar like in, in his escape room it's actually a bar so pretty. we sat in the very corner of the bar me trying to see macho by ordering a strong whiskey based mandarin the secretly wishing i could have just had what she was having Trisha proceeded to absolutely slaughter me at the foosball table i'm pretty good at foosball um it's fun hey i went to the gallop I went to the gallery today we're going to be talking about that because i went to the samsung store you go to a steakhouse so very um, expensive, very, very expensive. Um, but I've been to the Galleria before, it's very fun, um, especially the Samsung store. So we're gonna get into uh, that uh, after we finish um, talking about and discussing the worldview claims in this video. At which point I decided to just drop the act and order the fruity pink cocktail. And then they had this little bowl of popcorn at the table, presumably as a snack in case you got hungry. Not to Trisha. After a couple of hours of having drinks, I decided I gotta go to the bathroom. And this is the point where every girl I've been on a date with so far, every single girl does the same thing. They pull out their mirror, they made sure their makeup looked good, they un Okay, um, I don't know if there are any girls uh, in the chat, and we'll get to your chat messages soon, but um, do you guys carry around mirrors in your pocket? Uh, uh this will get clipped and posted to Instagram where uh, there are presumably more girls, and you can answer in the comments. But uh, do, do, do these kids just carry mirrors around in their pockets? All right, let's see what the child is saying. I would do an activity like mini golf or going to the beach, an activity you can't just have fun just for going out to dinner, LOL. But yeah, do a, a B activity, then dinner, then do whatever after. Okay, so an activity and dinner. Great, great advice for uh, the people watching. Um, it's the small things that matter, showing that you at least care. True, true. Uncrease their clothing. Do you know what I walked back into Drisha doing? Seeing how high she could throw that popcorn and catch it in her mouth without bounces. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's, I mean, I wish he got a video of that. That would have been funny. Like, she's, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> my kind of woman. And when I finally had to say bye to her that night and I watched her walk away from me, I turned around, I cursed, and I did the weirdest thing that I've never done before. Right there in that moment, I took out my phone and I took a photo. It's a photo of an empty street. It doesn't have me in it. It doesn't have her in it. I took that photo because I wanted to remember that moment. That uh, I wonder what kind of phone uh, he had uh, when he took his photo. I wonder what kind of phone that was. Might have been the S20 Ultra, maybe? Electrifying feeling. Almost like the universe itself had crept up behind me to whisper in my ear. And obviously, that's not true. The universe does not whisper. You're welcome. Do you want to know why? 
is because she saw me too. Trisha could see me clearer than anyone had ever seen me before, the real me. She refused to watch anything I put online for the simple fact that she wanted to know me for me and not what I did or who I presented myself as. Interesting. Um, that, that's an interesting um, take. Um, I wonder if she watches now. Well, she works for them now, but I wonder if she, uh, if she like, actually watches now. That or she just didn't like my videos. Which I, I hope not, because his videos are amazing. Um, apart from, you know, the bad worldview in, you know, this video, his videos are actually well put together, really well edited. I mean, this is an actually an example of what he would consider bad editing, because um, he has really good editing in, in, in his flashing and his animation. It's really upbeat. Like, I like to watch these just for fun, because obviously, you know, I, I'm not buying any of the stuff that he's, he's selling, uh, or not selling, but reviewing, because it's expensive and some of it doesn't even come to the United States could read me like a book. We'd say the exact same thing at the exact same time, in the exact same tone, so often we decided we should just take turns when speaking to people. Interesting, interesting. Uh, I wonder what that is, like scientifically or uh, psychologically, it's not obviously not, you know, spirits or something like that. And we had so much fun together. When we first met, I thought, wow, she loves everything I love. This is amazing. I wasn't well, except for Android. She has an iPhone. Yes, this is uh, Mr. Who's the Boss. Coincidence. It took me much longer to realize that the reason we love the same things is because Trisha is relentlessly curious. She is at every opportunity to take in the things I take interest in. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because it, it's completely unlikely, even in a small like comparison country uh, like England, to find someone who thinks exactly the same way as you without them, you know, doing a little bit of uh, research um, beforehand. But most importantly of all, she made me feel so down. Oh, I'm gonna have to cut that. Okay. Head is weirdly shaped. You look like a cartoon character, not a good one. That pushed me- Head does not look weirdly shaped to me. It looks fine to me. To create this spiky hairstyle that completely master shaved my head. And from the moment I did that and the comments stopped, I decided I wouldn't dare reveal my true identity to anyone anymore. Anytime a friend suggested we go swimming or out in the rain where my hair would get ruined, for years I would panic. I'd find a way to avoid it, and it took me a very long time to show Drisha what I looked like without the hair, because some part of my brain was terrified that any sane girl would leave me in that moment. But when I did, Drisha stared right back at me, with the exact same attraction and admiration that she always had. I was so confused how anyone could like the way I looked without three gallons of gel in my hair. I wanted to run and hide myself. Five seconds is plenty. But she told me no, Aaron, right here, right now, in this moment. And the sad thing about this is it's great. It's really great that his wife loves him and that he loves her. That's, that's a great thing. And marriage, you know, has been ordained uh, by God. But it, it he needs to have Jesus' love covering him and loving him and knowing that uh, he, he's approved his uh, self-worth shouldn't be tied to you know his youtube channel which uh, it isn't anymore or his wife or girlfriend at the time which should be tied to knowing that he is uh, created in god's image and and is loved by god even if everyone else were to stop loving him even if he would lose all his subscribers he still has inherent worth and dignity it's like this you look beautiful no matter what his hair looks like. I could slowly feel all those burdens I've been carrying becoming bridges, and my insecurities melting away. The things I've spent my entire- Oh, wait, we got some more questions here. How big is my delay? I don't know. Can you guys hear well? How, why did I skip? Bro needs God. Yep, yep. Oh, I was just, uh, it was just a little part um, bleeping out a uh, bad word. I like hiding from the world. She showed me how to be proud of them. She made me realize that trying to be this flawless version of myself all the time to serve other people was not just exhausting, but it would never, ever allow, which, which, allow me to be happy. Which is true. That is true. Um, what's it called? That That is an, a, a story, a theme um, discovered in, uh, discussed in Adventures in Odyssey. I'm not perfect, but that's what makes me perfect for her. She told me to embody that to wear that mantra like a badge, to shout it from the rooftops. There I am. 
And with this unconditional acceptance, by embracing me the exact same through both the good and the bad, Risha opened me up to love. She allowed me to both love and be loved more than I ever dreamed of being able to. And so it's probably not surprising that it only took eight dates before I knew I wanted to marry this girl. We weren't even boyfriend or girlfriend at this point, but I distinctly remember this moment. Uh, I wonder if that's normal. Of course, you know, none of the kids in the chat, you know, are married, hopefully. But um, I'm, I'm, I presume that they've gone on more than eight dates and obviously they're not married. So I wonder uh, how, how true that is. I was reading a book on my bed. There was a funny moment, like laugh out loud funny. So I turned around to see her and I realized she wasn't there. And it was the weirdest feeling because my entire life, if you'd asked me where I wanted to be, I would tell you one thing and one thing only. I want to go home. Except this moment, I realized that my- This is kind of funny because in the SSALTW series, you know, I'm always, you know, at school because, you know, it's like, I stay on a wall or I'm on a podcast. Like there's, there's not much SSALTW experience to be, you know, held there. So uh, the backdrop, the backdrop is school. It's, you know, just more exciting. Um, in real life and in literary form. The answer had changed. <laughs> I want to be wherever she is. Eight, yeah, eight dates. <laughs> if you've ever observed Russia and I in our natural habitat, we don't let go of each other. I wonder what the natural habitat is. Maybe it's like a bar or something? Unless there's simply no way around it, we don't leave the two meter vicinity within the other person. Um, for our American views, two meters is 39 times two inches, or about six yards. We've been told multiple times we're unbearable. It has actually just today. <laughs> but you don't want to know why. It's because fundamentally, Risha, you are my home. You've made me realize home isn't four walls and a ceiling. Home is a feeling. And in your arms... Good, good rhyming right there. Arms, in your eyes, in your hands, I feel home. <laughs> and that's what love is to me. Love yeah, it's is knowing 500 that you found your home, um, your safe lying. place. Um, and, and creating these animations. Sometimes in the United States, we use these for uh, Fourth of July celebrations instead of fireworks because it's uh, safer and you know there's not so much smoke and it's um, quieter. Um, but of course, it's, I think it's a bit more expensive. It's your sanctuary and that peaceful reassurance of knowing that you will be home till your final days. You know, every evening before we go to sleep, Drisha and I do a gratitude and goals list. Five things you're grateful for that day, and five things you want to achieve. That's pretty um, unique. I mean, it can it's very easy to find five things that you're grateful for, but five things that you want to achieve? I mean, every day? That is almost over 15,000, not 15,000, 1,500 achievements a, a year. And if, if you were to achieve those, um, if, um, granted that they change, that, that would be very impressive to achieve almost... 2,000 achievements. And every night, you know what she says she's grateful for? She says me. I'm at the top of that list every single time. That's great. That's and great. And you know what her top goal is, even after everything she already does for me? She says, to be better for me. That's the type of woman Trisha is. You know, the moment I proposed, I've watched that clip like 200 times at this point, mostly because the second I got down on one knee, the second I submitted myself to her for the rest of my life, her gut reaction, the first thing she did, without even thinking, was not to gasp or go for the ring. She dropped down to her knees with me and hugged me. That is the type of woman that Drisha is. And that's great. You can go see that clip on YouTube, actually. I'm um, in that video that you were talking about. It was captured, um, I think, by his videographers and in uh, high-tech night vision cameras. Now, here's what really gets me about it, though. If you think about it, the chance of you having met the life partner sitting next to you is basically zero. Eh, I wouldn't really say that. What's the popu uh, population of, um, pop what's the population of England? Uh, okay, he's, he's in England, right? We're not going to count all the UK because he didn't go to Scotland or anything like that. It's about 56 million people um, per 2018 uh, estimate. Right, and how many population, how many population of England women? It was about 28 million. So it's about 51% of the country's population. So it's a pretty even um, scenario. And then, of course, you have to splice down to the people who are already married, splice down to the people who are in your age segment. And you have, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, just a few million people, um, a few million people there. And he went to London, which is a very popular city, right? He's just walking down the street. I mean, 
it, 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 he, did the statistics work out such that it would be possible for him to meet him? I wouldn't say that the statistical chance is net zero. And LJB says he has submitted himself to God and said yes, because um, a, a great marriage first has to start with God and in, in, in defining your values with God. Yeah, go listen to a focus on the family broadcast for more expertise on that. It shouldn't have happened. Okay, I've heard you had to be in the exact right place at the exact right time. Your parents had to be in the exact right place at the exact right time. In fact, every single generation before you had to have done exactly what they did for you two to have met. Maybe, but of course, if you did something different, then you still might have met each other, okay? The chance is so close to zero that betting against it would be the easiest money you've ever made. Doubtful, seeing as the amount of people who uh, have gotten married. And, and, and the concept of, uh, what's it called? Soulmates is, I wouldn't say it's real, okay? Like, it, uh, five minutes ago, he said that Drissy was curious. So she was molding herself to become more like um, Aaron, Mr. Who's the Boss, right? Drissa, when she was just, you know, walking a year ago before uh, before she ever met Aaron, was not exactly like Aaron. She was a, a little bit different, right? Um, Aaron changed because of Drisha, and Drisha changed because of Aaron, right? So they just, when when they decided to get married and on their dates, they each became a little bit more like each other. They weren't um, intrinsically coded by the universe to become soulmates, which uh, it, it is why, like, yeah. So the way that I take that is either I am the luckiest man in the world for bumping into this angel Either every single star had to align in my favor or- Which obviously it isn't Christians. Christians would say that it's God's divine providence, which is true. Um, but it, it's not stars aligning or the universe uh, aligning with each other. Okay, and also it's simple statistics and the, just who a character um, caused to, to be like that. Or, or it was going to happen. We were meant to find each other. Which, I mean, Ali Stucky might actually agree with that. Um, she's Calvinist, I presume. So she believes that uh, everything is ordained and elect or something like that. You can go ask her about that. Um, but I, but of course, you know, from either her perspective or other Christians' perspective, it, it's either God ordained, but it's not, uh, it's not the stars or the universe. I can tell you that. Each other. Two people, born and brought up over a hundred miles apart, but so unbelievably designed for each other. That's Which what I choose to You could say designed by who? Aaron might say that it's because of just society or his family or just the way that it was. They each grew up in similar environments or something like that, and, or a different environments that caused them to um, become like each other. I feel the opposite attract. Um, but I, I wouldn't say that. I really wouldn't say that. Okay, I'd say that they were designed by God for each other. And I pray that Mr. Spars and Dresser, um, if they're not already become Christian and accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Now that I see all my life is like with you, Risha, I refuse to believe that my life could have been without you. So, standing here today, underneath this vast, vast cosmos, surrounded by all the people we love, Risha, I want to thank you because now when I look at the same sky. Those are really interesting. Uh, animation right? every single uh, night i don't see endless uncaring emptiness i see peace you show me the stars where i previously saw the void meeting you drisha always be my greatest achievement meeting you drisha has given me the conviction that the universe had a plan for us all along and if he just switched the universe with god the divine the almighty he would be right but right now he's wrong and whether or not it was written in the stars and we were destined to meet that as long as we are together everything is as it's meant to be and that the same fate that brought us together that allowed me to find my home and you to find yours that fate will also guide us forward i truly believe that and of course there is no such thing as fate when you probe hard enough into our existence when you try and use cold hard logic to calculate the purpose of our lives and the true reasons why we do things none of it makes any sense and that was me for my entire life <laughs> But you, Drisha, you have made me realize that while the end point of life may be empty, well... Which it isn't. The end point of life is either two things, heaven or hell. Hopefully, you want to go to heaven by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Every flicker eventually does go out. 
That doesn't make the purpose meaningless. The purpose of life is love. Kind of. Like I said, and I'll say it again, the purpose of life is to love and worship um, God, right? It's not to love and worship of the people, right? Humans were created to worship. If, you don't, if they don't worship God, don't worship of anything else. Nothing cures like love. Nothing protects like love. Nothing endures like love. And so what... Which, I mean, he's right. You go read the uh, first Corinthians 13, just not completely right. Can the objective be, but to give and receive as much love as you possibly can in the time that you have, to not try and change the universe, but to see it as your canvas, to paint your love story across. <laughs> Mark Twain once said, the two most important moments are when you were born and when you found out why. And now that I found out why, my life is so simple. All right, and that's all um, that we're going to do for now. Let's read what the comments are, and then we're going to get into some more tech commentary. LJB says there's no, there is such a thing as faith. The Bible says, oh, he said faith, not faith. Um, yeah, the Bible does say walk by faith. There is such a thing as faith, not faith. Faith is different than faith. Um, all right, now let's get into our tech commentary. So. I